And as the Rajya Sabha election pot continues to boil amidst this tug of war that's taking place, my first newsmaker is the Congress leader and uh, senior leader from Rajasthan, Sachin Pilot, joins me. Appreciate you joining us, uh, Mr. Pilot. The big question, Subhash Chandra, the independent candidate, Z Media Baron, has already suggested to Sachin Pilot that you switch over, that you leave the Congress and join hands, in a sense, with the BJP and Subhash Chandra in this Rajya Sabha election. Are you in any position to think about that? What I do think about Rajiv is the fact that as a, as a candidate, even though he is said to be independent, he's, uh, all his nomination papers were filed by the BJP MLAs. So he's primarily a BJP candidate. But I do think that he must be led up the golden path and now left high and dry. That's why he's desperately trying to reach out to whoever he can. But rest assured, um, uh, he will not make it to Raj Sabha because the Congress has three candidates that Mrs. Gandhi has fielded from Rajasthan. And all those three have sufficient numbers and more to return to the upper house. Um, I think there is no doubt in anyone's mind mm -hmm. uh, that the three candidates that we have fielded in Rajasthan will secure a victory and a handsome victory at that. The reason I'm asking you this is his exact quote of Subhash Chandra was, this is an opportunity for Mr. Pilot to take revenge or to give a message if he misses this opportunity, he will not be able to become Rajasthan Chief Minister till 2028. He's actually urging you to rebel. He's saying, Sachin Pilot, rebel and break your party. Well, I think he's, uh, he must really be desperate to have made those comments. Uh, he knows very well that there is no chance that he will make it to the upper house. Uh, so the Congress party is fielded candidates and we have all been elected on the Congress symbol. So all of our votes and the independent MLAs who support the government will vote for the three candidates. Um, and I suggested to him yesterday itself, uh, I, Mr. Chandra, I told him that politics is not like making a TV series. No, you can't pick and choose who does what. Uh, this is a serious business and the numbers speak and reflect uh, who will get elected. So we have three candidates. We have more than enough votes uh, supporting our three candidates. And no matter how much they try or the BJP tries, they will not be able to uh, dislodge that figure and we will get more than anticipated votes when the votes are cast on uh, 10th of June. But let me ask you this in conclusion. If you are so confident as you are sounding at the moment, why are all the Congress and independent MLAs in the Aravali Resort, Taj Resort in Udaipur virtually under lock and key? If you are sounding so confident, then they shouldn't be under lock and key. Clearly, you are worried that some of them may cross vote. There's all talk of money power when it comes to Rajya Sabha elections. Not at all. <clears throat> First of all, nobody is under lock and key. Uh, all the MLAs are together because they felt that they should not be under undue influence of anybody. And as you know, the uh, BJP and the government have, uh, are, are quite famous for using uh, sources and agencies and pressure to get the MLAs to switch sides. Uh, that's not going to happen. Uh, it's unfortunately become the norm for most parties in most states for these elections. Uh, I don't think uh, it's uh, something that uh, you know, we should be proud of, but unfortunately, because of the circumstances created in the last four or five years, the ecosystem has become such that you have to do this, and every party in every state is forced to do this. No, no, what, um, no, no, what, tell, what, no, what, what are, no, no, what are they they're doing? Together no, you're saying they're not. Influence. No, so why, why are they in a resort? If they're, you know, if they're not under lock and key, if they're free to move around, why keep them in a, in a resort? Clearly, you're worried that the other side could have inducements and your MLAs could be susceptible. <clears throat> Rajdeep, you may not be informed, but the BJP has put all its MLAs in a hotel in Jaipur. So no one has been pressurized to be there. They've all voluntarily gone out of their own free will to be together so that no undue influence can be exerted on them. I think they have the right to be together. You and I can't stop them. So it's not under pressure and there's no lock and key. They're all together because they want to be together. Uh, and the BJP may try and say that, you know, uh, people will come out, etc. But on voting day, you will find that not just in Rajasthan, but also in Haryana and Maharashtra, wherever the BJP is so-called supporting independent candidates, which is basically a proxy for their own candidates, they will not meet because the numbers are very clear. There's no confusion. The MLAs have to show their votes and cast it. So I think anyone who believes that they can uh, have MLAs switch sides is living in a fool's paradise. No, but do you agree that the overall system is such that today, inducements are all over. We are told that the going rate for some of these MLAs to cross vote is running into several crores. Is that true? I think we have to find a way where the elections are more transparent and the, uh, the rules are such that uh, there is no scope for any such thing that to happen because the upper house is meant for the house of the elders. They can go and 
propagate the story of the states and you know debate about issues in the upper house but what's happening in the last few years it's it's not something that's healthy for our democracy and i think we must find a more transparent way the regulations are very clear and all, you know i think people don't expect uh, all this to happen this has been the trend in the last few years where you want cross voting and you want MLS to switch sides etc we should be making policy and debating about what's going on in the states but unfortunately because of the last five years, four, six, seven years of circumstances being created, one is forced to take these steps. No one does it voluntarily, uh, but we know what has happened before and we can't take a chance. Therefore, every party is forced to do these things in every state. Have you been uh, rung up by Mr. Subhash Chandra offering you something special that you seem to be a soft target because they are saying two years ago you rebelled against Mr. <laughs> Gehlot's leadership. So Sachin Pilot is vulnerable. No, he and I, his supporters can switch over. This is the moment to switch. I, you know, Rajdeep, in fact, I have offered I have offered advice that he should retire before polling because it's better to uh, side with humility and say, well, I've conceded defeat, as opposed to getting humiliated on, on March 10th, on June 10th. So one can say, obviously, when a candidate is contesting, he or she has to say they're winning, right? They can't say, I'm fighting to lose. But we know the numbers are stacked up against them. It's inevitable. And yet they want to uh, go out there and try and create a confusion where none exists. So Rajasthan, be rest assured, we are winning all the three seats. Haryana, Mr. Markan will pull through. Mrs. Gandhi and Rahulji have given us those candidates. And it is the responsibility of all MLAs in the Congress and supporting parties to make sure that these candidates win the elections. And so that the record is set straight. All this confusion, all this commenting statements, I think people need to be told. And I think June 10th uh, will be a clear reflection of what was said and what really happened. Fair enough. You are in a combative mood. That's the way perhaps politicians should be. But I appreciate your joining us, taking the time of the Sachin Pilot. Thank you very much.